God bless you, Admiral Apostle Barry. Above, I welcome you to this faith instruction. Let us pray. Father, we come to you today in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Lord, we enter your gates with thanksgiving. We thank you for your goodness, kindness, mercy, love, forgiveness, and generosity. We come to your courts with praise. We praise you for being the almighty God, the great God, the great healer, the great provider. We thank you, God, for being our Father. We thank you for the name of Jesus, the only name given whereby men must be saved. Is the name of Jesus. Thank you for saving, healing, delivering, and prospering your people today, Lord. Thank you for sending Jesus here, Lord, and uh, causing him to die for our sins. Hallelujah. And uh, thank you for uh, empowering Jesus to defeat all of our adversaries and all adversarial things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The message today, thank you, God, in Jesus' name. The message today is undefeated warriors. Undefeated warriors is the message today. Children of God, we are undefeatable warriors. We cannot lose a fight. We cannot lose a fight. We do not know how to lose a fight. We are winners of every battle. No matter what comes against us, we always overcome. Whatever the challenge, trial, or test, we always defeat it in the Lord. We are undefeatable warriors. We cannot lose a fight. We do not know how to lose a fight. We are winners of every battle. No matter what comes against us, we always overcome. No matter what comes against us, we always overcome. Whatever the challenge, trial, or test, we always defeat it in the Lord. We cannot be held back by anything, nor anyone. We cannot be held down by anything, nor anyone. We cannot be defeated by anything, nor anyone. We are conquering soldiers that have already conquered all things in Christ. We are more than conquerors because Jesus has overcome the world and he has given us that victory. Jesus has defeated all sickness, disease, poverty, lack, death, inability, devils, death, sin, trial, test, hell, and disability for us. Hallelujah. We are undefeatable warriors. Jesus, the man of war, has already defeated every attack against his body. You're looking at the body of Christ today as you're looking at me, child of God. And as you look at yourself, you're looking at the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus, the man of war, has already defeated every attack against his body. People of God, we are the body of Jesus Christ. We are undefeated warriors. We are men and women of war. We are undefeatable warriors. No attack against us can succeed against us. We are winners of every battle. We are winners of every fight. Every fight we fight is a good fight because we are always the winner. We are the victorious armed forces of God Almighty. We are the victorious armed force of God Almighty. We are the mighty soldiers of the army of God in heaven and upon the earth. We are undefeatable warriors. We are people of war. We speak victoriously. We think victoriously. We war only a good warfare. All adversaries and adversarial things shall bow and surrender at the name of Jesus that we speak. Upon our demand, every adversary and adversarial thing shall confess that Jesus is ruler, king, and God. We are the conquering force of the Lord of hosts. And nothing can stand before us. The 
message today is undefeated warriors. We are undefeated warriors because we haven't lost a fight and we cannot lose a fight. Children of God, we are undefeatable warriors. Children of God, we are undefeatable. Children of God, we are undefeatable warriors. We cannot lose a fight. We do not know how to lose a fight. We are winners of every battle. No matter what comes against us, we always overcome. Whatever the challenge, trial, or test, we always defeated in the Lord. We cannot be held back by anything nor anyone. We cannot be held down by anything nor anyone. We cannot be defeated by anything nor anyone. We are conquering soldiers that have already conquered all things in Christ. We are more than conquerors because Jesus has overcome the world and he has given us that victory. Jesus has defeated all sickness, disease, poverty, lack, death, inability, devils, death, sin, trial, test, hell, and disability for us. Jesus, the man of war, has already defeated every attack against his body. And every Christian is the body of Jesus Christ. People of God, we are the body of Jesus Christ. We are undefeated warriors. We are men and women of war. We are undefeatable warriors. No attack against us can succeed against us. We are winners of every battle. We are winners of every fight. Every fight we fight is a good fight because we are always the winner. We are the victorious armed force of God Almighty. We are the mighty soldiers of the army of God in heaven and upon the earth. We are undefeatable warriors. We are undefeatable warriors. We are people of war. We speak victoriously. We think only victoriously. We war only a good warfare. All adversaries and adversarial things shall bow, that means surrender, at the name of Jesus that we speak. Upon our demand, every adversary an adversarial thing shall confess that Jesus is ruler here on earth, my friend. We are the conquering force of the Lord of hosts, and nothing can stand before us. Let's read in 2 Timothy. Hallelujah. Turn in your Bible to 2 Timothy. Praise be to God. This is our foundation scripture, Second Timothy. Praise be to God. Chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. There is no doubt you shall face unpleasant things, but endure those unpleasant things as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And you can endure those things, those unpleasant things, when your focus is on the joy that's set before you. And you have the knowledge that uh, God has already delivered you. You have the knowledge that your adversaries have already been defeated. You have the knowledge that God has already brought you out of the trouble. Hallelujah. So you can endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 4. No man that warrant entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Let's turn now to Isaiah chapter 54. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And seven, verse 17 says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. God meant it. Sickness cannot uh, succeed against you. In other words, sickness must be destroyed and cast away from you while you're here on earth right now because Jesus has already defeated all sickness, all disease. 
Jesus had defeated all poverty, all debt, all lack, all insufficiency. Jesus has defeated every devil. Jesus has defeated death. Jesus has defeated sin and taken it out of your life, child of God. Jesus has de defeated every trial, test, hell, and disability for you. So no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. You'll prove that it's wrong. Every tongue that 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 uh, rises up against you, you'll prove that it's wrong. Hallelujah. You shall condemn. Hallelujah. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. The message is undefeated warriors. Children of God, we are undefeatable warriors. We cannot lose a fight. We do not know how to lose a fight. We are winners of every battle. No matter what comes against us, we always overcome. Whatever the challenge, trial, or test, we always defeat it in the Lord. We cannot be held back by anything. We cannot be held back by anything nor anyone. We cannot be held down by anything nor anyone. We cannot be defeated by anything nor anyone. We are conquering soldiers that have already conquered all things in Christ. We are more than conquerors because Jesus has overcome the world and he has given us that victory. Jesus has defeated all sickness, disease, poverty, lack, death, inability, devils, death, sin, trials, tests, hell, and disability for us. Jesus, the man of war, has already defeated every attack against his body. You're looking at the body of Jesus Christ today as you're looking at me, child of God. As you look at your own body, you're looking at the body of Jesus Christ. We are the body of Jesus Christ. We are undefeated warriors. We are men and women of war. We are undefeatable warriors. No attack against us can succeed against us. We are winners of every battle. We are winners of every fight. Every fight we fight is a good fight because we always win. We are the victorious armed force of God Almighty. We are the mighty soldiers of the army of God in heaven and upon the earth. We are undefeatable warriors. We are people of war. We speak victoriously. We think victoriously. We war only a good warfare. All adversaries and adversarial things shall bow and surrender at the name of Jesus that we speak. When we tell sickness to go in the name of Jesus, that sickness will bow. It will surrender and it will leave. Hallelujah. When we tell it to go. Hallelujah. Upon our demand, every adversary and adversarial thing shall confess that Jesus is ruler here on this planet. The weather shall confess that Jesus is ruler here on this planet when we speak to it in the name of Jesus and tell it to be calm, be at peace. When we tell the wind to be at peace, be calm, hallelujah. When we tell the storms to cease their operation now in Jesus' name. When we tell the tornadoes to stop, be destroyed, be cast out of the atmosphere in Jesus' name. It shall bow. Hallelujah. Disabilities, inabilities shall bow. Hallelujah. To the name of Jesus that we speak. We are undefeated warriors. We are the conquering force of the Lord of hosts. And nothing can stand before us. Hallelujah. I shall prove what I said by every uh, by, by uh, reading you the word of God to validate my opening statements that we are undefeatable children of God. We are undefeated warriors. I didn't come here today to tell you you'll never have any trouble. You know you've already had trouble in your life in times past and as you uh, 
as you are on this planet, you shall face trouble again. I didn't come here to tell you that you'll never uh, face adversity. I didn't come here to tell you that uh, you'll never have a challenge or challenge in your life. I didn't come here to tell you that you'll never have a trial or test. I came here to tell you that you've overcome every challenge, every trial and test, and every adversity that has come against you. You've already overcame it in the Lord and by the work of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because Jesus has defeated all of our adversaries already. Hallelujah. Uh, you'll face a challenge, there's no doubt about it, but the challenge will not be able to defeat you. No weapon form shall prosper against you because you are more than a conqueror. You are undefeatable. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. You cannot be held back by anything nor by anyone. You cannot be held down by anything nor anyone. You cannot be defeated by anything nor anyone. You are the conquering soldiers of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I want to let you know before I just go into the scripture. We'll be reading in Exodus chapter 15 verse 3. We'll start validating all of my statements with the word of God. Uh, I want to let you know that years ago I was... Uh, I had pain in my abdomen. I had I'd been uh, experiencing pain in my abdomen for years, and I didn't know what was wrong. I went to doctors, and I even I was in the hospital on, on occasion, and uh, they didn't find out what the problem was. But you know, I prayed to the Lord about it. You see, I prayed to the Lord about it, but, but I remember on occasion that I went to a hospital, and, the, and I was in the emergency room, and the doctor told me he thought, that my appendix had uh, ruptured inside me. And he wanted to go inside and, and look at my stomach to see what the problem was. But he said his medical training told him that uh, it was, uh, uh, that, that he believed that it was uh, my appendix. And uh, what had happened, my appendix burst inside of me. Hallelujah. I stayed in the hospital two weeks. I ran a high fever. They didn't know what was causing the fever. And, they, and when they took my appendix out, you know, they saw that it had ruptured inside me and they, you know, cleansed me to the best they could. They couldn't, you know, sew me up. I, the, the wound was open. And I stayed in the hospital for two weeks. I want to let you know that uh, I faced trouble. But the appendicitis, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the ruptured appendix did not prosper against me. It did not kill me. Hallelujah. It came against me, but God had already defeated it. God said I was healed. I said I was healed. And at that time, I didn't understand, you know, that the uh, word of God that says, and with his stripes we are healed. I just opened the Bible and found Isaiah 53, 5 that says that he had healed me with his stripes. And I told God, I said, I don't understand because I'm in the hospital. I said, but I, I know your word is true. And so that's all I will be saying is that I'm healed. And uh, after they released me from the hospital, I was at home and nurses came by and they would, you know, change my bandages and that was in my abdomen. They would, you know, wash, wash the wound. And uh, I kept saying I was healed by the word of God. And of course, you see, I'm healed. I want to let you know that... Uh, uh, a few years ago, I was paralyzed. I could not even stand upright. I, I couldn't even sit upright. I, I couldn't walk. I was paralyzed. I went to the hospital. Hallelujah. I went to several hospitals, praise the Lord. But before I went to the hospital, I told my body, and I said, body, you're healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. You're healed. You're already delivered. Hallelujah. I said, you're already set free. Praise be to God. And a uh, friend, you see that I'm, I'm not paralyzed anymore. I'm here today telling you about the goodness and the greatness of God Almighty. I didn't come to tell you you wouldn't have a challenge in life. I came to tell you that you've already overcome the challenge because Jesus has already overcome the world in your behalf. Hallelujah. Jesus has already 
defeated every sickness and every disease. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And Jesus has already defeated your adversaries. Praise be to God. I recall that I was working for a tree service and uh, I wanted to trim. You know, at first I was just a ground person, you know, taking up the brush and putting it in the ground. But I wanted to trim the trees. I wanted to make a little more money. And the guy let me do it. And so I was going along trimming, and all of a sudden I was in this boom up in the air, way up in the air, and I, in the, I moved the wrong level and pulled the boom all the way up into the electrical lines. Electricity was all in the air, all up and down the lines, and I heard the popping sound, and I was down inside of the boom, and the, the control were on the opposite side, on the bucket, but they was, you know, on the side below, you know, of my reach on, on, on you know, on the bucket and the boom, I would call it, and uh, that was no natural way for me to get out of that situation. It looked impossible. Hallelujah. My supervisor seemed to be hysterical. He was just screaming, you got to do something, you got to do something. I did something. I called on the name of the Lord. And uh, friend, you see I'm here today. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. He got my hand through the... Uh, you know, electricity that's it threw all of that adversity and I pulled the right level and pulled the boom down, got out of it. And I hallelujah and walked away safely. I remember I was uh, going to school and uh at night school, taking some college courses and I was we was driving back and ran right into a very fierce storm and, and we couldn't see, had to vacate the vehicle, you see. Sit saw eighteen wheel on the side of the road and and we, we got out of the vehicle and we, we uh, proceeded to find shelter and we uh, entered into this large ditch and the, the, it was raining so that the ditch stopped filling up with water and we had to come out of the ditch because there was just too much water in the ditch and at that time, friend, I didn't know how to walk on water. I didn't know how to swim so I said, we got to get out of this ditch and it was lightning that saw all the lightning up in, you know, in the sky and, you know, and it was just raining and the wind, was, the force of the wind was strong. And I, I called on the name of the Lord, hallelujah, and asked him to help me. And immediately the storm stopped, hallelujah. I didn't come to tell you that you wouldn't have any trouble in your life. I just came to tell you that trouble can't defeat you. I came to tell you that sickness cannot kill you. Sickness has to have permission in order to to kill you. Sickness has to have your permission in order to kill you. Sickness has to have your permission in order to, to continue to work against your body. If you tell it to go in the name of Jesus, it's got to bow. It, it will bow. It will surrender and leave your body because you are more than a conqueror. You already have the victory. You always triumph in Christ. Hallelujah. I recall the time that I was coming back from Little Rock and I was sitting in the back seat with a friend of mine and two ladies were driving, and the lady was upset, and she was speeding. We was on the highway there in England, and she was speeding, uh, driving real fast, and a, a horse came across the highway. And she just became hysterical, took her hands off the steering wheel, and the car was just moving at a rapid speed. And, and, and then my friend reached over and grabbed the steering wheel and turned it away from the horse, and we went in, down inside of a very large ditch. But the car didn't turn over, and it, it was going so fast, it came right out of the ditch, and, it, it, and it, it just missed going into a house by just a little bit. And, and I didn't get a scratch on me. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I also want to tell you that uh, I think it was in 2002, the doctor said I had uh, de degenerated heart failure. I think that's what they call it. You know, but I know my heart can't fail me because God created my heart. And, it's, and of course, he's healed my heart. But it, it said I had blocked arteries, you see. And uh, heart failure, they call it. Uh, praise be to God. But I want to let you know that my heart is healed. God has healed my heart and my arteries. Hallelujah. I'm free of blockage because of Jesus. Man. Because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm more than a conqueror. I already have the victory. Jesus has given me the victory. And he has given his soldiers the victory over all the work of the enemy. We walk 
on all the power of the enemy. I came to tell you, praise the Lord, that I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Doctor asked me, do you have uh, diabetes? I said, no, I don't. You know, I know I had the word of God, that I was healed by the word of God. He said, do you have diabetes? I said, no. But anyway, I took med medication for several years. And finally, they, 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 you know, the doctor just said, let's stop taking the medicine. You can't find no diabetes in your body. God healed me. Hallelujah. Because I'm the healed one. Hallelujah. The message today is undefeated warriors. Children of God, we are undefeatable warriors. We cannot lose a fight. We do not know how to lose a fight. We are winners of every battle. No matter what comes against us, we always overcome. Whatever the challenge, trial, or test, we are always defeated in the Lord. We cannot be held back by anything nor anyone. We cannot be held down by anything nor anyone. We cannot be defeated by anything nor anyone. We are conquering soldiers that have already conquered all things in Christ. We are more than conquerors because Jesus has overcome the world and he has given us that victory. Jesus has already defeated all sickness, disease, poverty, lack, death, inability, devils, death, sin, trials, tests, hell, and disabilities for us. Jesus, the man of war, has already defeated every attack against his body. People of God, we are the body of Jesus Christ. We are undefeated warriors. We are men and women of war. We are undefeatable warriors. No attack against us can succeed against us. We are winners of every battle. We are winners of every fight. Every fight we fight is a good fight because we are always the winner. We are the victorious armed force of God Almighty. We are the mighty soldiers of the army of God in heaven and upon the earth. We are undefeatable warriors. We are undefeatable warriors. We are undefeatable warriors. We are undefeatable warriors. We are people of war. We speak victoriously. We think only victoriously. We war only a good warfare. All adversaries and adversarial things shall bow and surrender at the name of Jesus that we speak. Upon our demand, every adversary and advers advers adversarial thing shall confess that Jesus is ruler, king, and God. I'll make this statement again. Tom, get right. Upon our demand, every adversary and adversary adversarial thing shall confess that Jesus is ruler, king, and God. We are the conquering force of the Lord of hosts, and nothing can stand before us. The message today is undefeated warriors. Exodus chapter 15 verse 3 says, the Lord, talking about Jesus, is a man of war. Hallelujah. Jesus has already defeated our enemies for us. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Hallelujah. You see, we couldn't have defeated our enemies by our person anyway. Hallelujah. You know, praise be to God. Hallelujah. But Jesus has came and defeated sin and removed sin out of our life. He died, paid the penalty for our transgressions. Hallelujah. And set us free from sin washed us from sin in his own blood. He defeated the devil. Hallelujah. 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 And brought us into the family of his father. Daniel chapter 4 verse 35 says, And he doeth, talking about God, according to his will in the army of heaven. God's army is in heaven and God's army is, is upon the earth. The Christians are God's soldiers. Hallelujah. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand. Could no one stay God's hand? God has already finished the work. He's already defeated our adversaries. And every adverse thing 
God has already defeated it. So it has no effect on us. Hallelujah. We can't be defeated. We can't be held back. We can't be held down. We're always successful. We're always prosperous. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. And he do it according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus is speaking. These things have I, these things I have spoken unto you. That's what Jesus said. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. See, in him we have peace. No matter what's going on around. No matter what the adversary says, we have peace because we're in Jesus. And we know that the adversary is already defeated. We know that any unpleasant situation or ungodly condition that tried to uh, overcome us has already been defeated. So we have peace in him. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. See, I didn't come here to tell you that you would never have tribulation, trial, or, or test. I didn't come here to tell you that you'll never be challenged. You shall be challenged, but the challenge can't defeat you because the challenge has already been defeated by Jesus. All you got to do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. All you got to do is believe what thus saith the Lord and say what thus saith the Lord. And you'll see the glory of God on every occasion. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. See, he overcame the world for us. Romans chapter 4, verse 22 through 25 says, open, turn into your Bible, Romans chapter 4, verse 22 through 25. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. You know, Abraham believed God, and, and because he believed God, that was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, God declared him righteous because he believed what God said. He believed God. Hallelujah. Verse 23. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was Im imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, that word imputed, and ascribed, hallelujah, to us. Righteousness has been ascribed to us, because we believe God, and we believe Jesus. But it says, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our trans, uh, he, who was delivered for our offenses. Jesus was delivered because of our transgressions. He died for the sins of the world. He paid the penalty uh, for transgression. Uh, he paid the, the penalty for uh, every man's sin. He paid the penalty for it. So that they could receive salvation. Now every man will not be saved. But the penalty has been paid for those people. Giving them the opportunity to come in if they desire to and receive the pardon from God because they have uh, because Jesus has paid all of the uh, penalty for sin. It says who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. It says in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us against it. It says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And, 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 and Jesus is talking about the church, the body. His body said the gates of hell. No matter what hell bring against you, no matter what the devil bring against you, it shall not prevail against you. And I'm going to show you in the scripture that the devil has already been defeated. I'm going to show you that, that Jesus has the, the keys of hell. Hallelujah. So, hell, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the body of Christ. Because the gates of hell has already, have already been defeated by Jesus. And we have that 
victory. Hallelujah. Over the gates of hell. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 says this. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. For your word today. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 says, For as much then as children are partakers of for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, referring to Jesus, also himself likewise took part of the same. Jesus became a man. You see, uh, man could not save himself. Man was under a death sentence. Uh, the wages of sin is death, and for all had sinned, so uh, the death sentence was upon mankind. And God didn't want mankind to experience the second death. You know, God did not want man to be separated from him for all eternity. God did not want man to be in the lake of fire and brimstone for eternity. And uh, But uh, but uh, there was no man qualified on earth to die in order to redeem man from the offense that mankind had committed. Uh, there must be uh, the shedding of blood for the remission of sin. And all mankind's blood was contam contaminated by sin because of that. So, Someone had to die. Hallelujah. Justice had to be satisfied. So uh, God sent his son here to take upon human flesh so that he could die, shed his blood. And of course his blood would, would be shed his blood because uh, he didn't have a natural father. God uh, was the father of Jesus Christ. He was born of a virgin. So his blood would be holy and, and would uh, wash away all the sins of the world. Hallelujah. And would restore man back to God. So, so that's the reason why he took on flesh. It said, for well, as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death, see, through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. You see, he had to die in order to, to, to destroy the one that had the power of the death. That had the power of death. And the devil had the power of death. It says, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to death. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 says, But this man, talking about Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, Hallelujah, forever, Jesus has offered one sacrifice for sins. He offered up his own body, his own blood. Bible sin, sat down on the right hand of God. Now it says in Revelation chapter 1, I'm going to let you know, child of God, you don't have sin anymore. Hallelujah. Because Jesus has washed you from your sins in his own blood. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 says, and from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins. In his own blood. So we are clean and pure. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus has washed us from our sins in his own blood. So I want to let you know that Jesus has already defeated sin. Jesus has defeated all sickness, disease, poverty, lack, death, disability, inability, devils, death, trials, tests, hell, the gates of hell cannot prevail against us. We are undefeatable warriors. It says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. 
God, this is Jesus speaking, said he would give, up, give us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The word key uh, means something that is a means of access. When you got a key, you got access to it particular thing. So he give, gave us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We got access to the kingdom of heaven. The word keys means something that is a means of access control. We get control, hallelujah, of the kingdom of God. Because we are uh, in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is within us. We're citizens of the kingdom. We have control in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God has control over all things. The kingdom of God rules over all the earth and rules out of the earth. It rules everywhere. We have the key of control now. It means possession. So when you got, you know, like I said, you got the key to your car that proves that you got possession of that car. You got the key to your house that proves that, that you got possession of your house. It is also proof that you got control and, and access of that house or that car. That's what keys mean. So. Jesus said, and I will give unto thee, unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind, that word bind means to tie up. It means to cause something to be bound. And when something is bound, it's restricted. It can't move freely. You know, it can't go about it and do what it was doing because it's bound. It says, and, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. See, we bind the devil here on earth. He's already bound in heaven. He's not allowed to. To, to move about freely in hell. We bind poverty here on earth or in our house, hallelujah, or in our life, and we bind poverty in the lives of people, hallelujah. Praise be to God. It's bound in, it bound in hell. See, poverty does not operate in hell. We bind sickness here on earth, and because when we bind it, we command it to leave too. We command it to go. We don't let it operate. We, we stop it from operating, but we command it away from our body or from uh, uh, other people's body. It's bound in heaven. There's no sickness operating in heaven. You know, Jesus told us to pray that God will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Well, there's peace in heaven. We, so God wants peace on earth. That, that he wants peace in your house and peace in your business, peace in your family. There's joy in heaven. God wants joy in your life. There's health. Everybody there in heaven is healthy. God wants health for you, and he's already provided it for you. He's already provided these things for you, but you have to bind things so that they will be bound. Hallelujah. If you don't bind, they won't be bound. you got to loose things so that they will be loose. But if you don't loose things, they won't be loose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants our days to be as the days of heaven here on earth. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. See, we lose health in the body, uh, bodies of people. Health is already loosed in heaven. Everyone there in heaven, uh, all the people there in heaven are healthy. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no death in heaven. So we raise the dead. Hallelujah. Tell people, call the dead to get up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There's no death in heaven. Hallelujah. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 showing you that Jesus has already defeated our enemies. We are victorious, my people. Colossians 2 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, Talking about Jesus. Jesus has four principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, tri triumphing over them in it. In other words, he took the devil's power of death. He stripped the devil uh, of his armor. He defeated the devil. Hallelujah. He crushed the head of the devil. And he defeated all devils and demons. And gave us that victory over them. What we tell them to do in his name, that's what they do. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 says, I am he that liveth, Jesus is speaking, Jesus is speaking, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. See, but well, we are joined in. What Jesus received, we receive. You see, joined in means 
it, it, uh, is referring to, it. no matter how many people are heirs, when they are joint heirs, it's, they are considered as one body. See, we are the one body of Christ. So whatever Jesus has received, this is what we receive because we are his body. We have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We have the keys of hell and of death. We got control of death now. We got control of death now. Hallelujah. We got control of the gates of hell. The gates of hell. All that the enemy would want to bring could not defeat us. Cannot hold us down. He's the one that's down already under our feet. Hallelujah. The word of God is the word of God. I say we're John here. Let me read that to you in Romans chapter 8 verse 17. To show you we receive what Jesus has received. And Jesus came to the earth to receive all these things. To take possession of all the things that the devil had, had in his possession. In order to give those things to us. Hallelujah. Jesus came to put an end to the work of the devil. He came here to destroy the work of the devil. Romans chapter, 8, 7, uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 17. And the children, we're children of God, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. See, we have all power now in heaven and in earth. We are in charge of the earth. Hallelujah. God gave man dominion over the earth. Hallelujah. You know, of course, man sinned. And people uh, were given orders that were, were not right nor godly, causing destruction and evil to come up on the planet. You know, because the people had came under the uh, uh, authority of the wicked one. But another man came, the last Adam came, and, and defeated the adversary. Hallelujah. And uh, as he did it as a man, because he had uh, uh, he, he had the authority to execute judgment on the earth, because he was the son of man. See, man has the authority to execute judgment on the earth, because God gave him that authority to do it. But now we are in charge. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We're in charge now. We have all the power unto my people of God. We have all the power. And all authority in heaven and in earth. First Peter chapter 3 verse 22 says, Who has gone into heaven, talking about Jesus, and is on the right hand of God. Jesus is in heaven now at the right hand of God. Angels, the devil is an angel, fallen angel. And authorities, authorities, powers are angels. Angels and authorities being made subject unto him. See, so Angels, authorities, and powers, whatever the power is, is subject to me because I'm the body of Christ. I'm the son of God. So angels, uh, authorities, and powers are subject to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we receive what Jesus has taken possession of. He came to take possession of things in order to give, give it to his brother. Hallelujah. We couldn't save ourselves. So... God sent Jesus here to save us and to empower us. And uh, so Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And all things are subject to him. And we're sitting at the right hand of the Father too in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Because uh, when, when God raised Jesus up, he raised us up also to sit in heavenly places in him. I read that to you in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 and 11 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, talking about Jesus, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus. Every devil, every demon, all adversity shall bow, shall surrender, at the name of Jesus. All we have to do is speak to that thing of being in the name of Jesus and it will surrender when we tell it what to do. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. It says, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, things in heaven and things in earth 
and things under the earth. That they and that every tongue and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That word Lord means ruler, king, and God. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, I tell sickness to go in the name of Jesus, be destroyed sickness in the name of Jesus. It will bow. Hallelujah. It will bow. And it will confess that Jesus is ruling, not the disease. Sickness is not rooted in anything you're on this planet. It's under our feet. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 says, And when he called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. See, we have power against unclean spirits to cast them out. And to heal all manner of sickness, we have his power. To heal, we got the power of God to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. No matter what it is, you're healed today in Jesus' name. And to also make the lame, I mean, yeah, make the lame leap for uh, joy, you're healed today. Your bones are uh, properly aligned and strengthened in Jesus' name. And to heal the man, to make him whole. Whether you're missing a leg, you got it back today. You're missing an arm, you got it back today. Right now in Jesus' name. You're missing eyes, you got them back in Jesus' name. If your flesh been burned, I command it restored now in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10, verse 19 says, Behold, Jesus is speaking, I give unto you power to tread. That word tread means to uh, it means to uh, walk on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We walk on his power because he's under us. We walk on the enemy's power. That word tread means to uh, treat or put down harshly or cruelly, crush. It means to walk on over or along. It means to press beneath the foot, trample. It means to trample so as to press, crush, or injure. Hallelujah. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Talking about the believers, the body of Christ. In my name shall they cast out devils. We tell devils to go in Jesus' name, and they're gone. They shall lay hands on the sick. We lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. God brings the help back into their body because God has already healed them. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things, children of God. We can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me, which strengtheneth us. Whatever you are facing, you, you already have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you're facing, you already have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 says, But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been given the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever we're facing, we have the victory. We're always victorious. Because no weapon formed against us can prosper. The enemy is under our feet. Disease, sickness, disability, inability is under, they are under our feet. But thanks be to God who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15. Now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ. We always triumph. We always come out as the winners. We always come forth as the winners. Because we are the winners. We always triumph in Christ. In every challenge you face, you are more than a, a conqueror because the victory is already yours. Romans chapter 8 verse 37 says, Nay, and all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Since we have received Christ Jesus, we should conduct, conduct our, uh, ourselves in, in, the, in uh, the manner of Christ. Let me make this statement again. Since we have received Christ Jesus, we should conduct ourselves in the same manner that he conducted himself when he was on earth in his physical body. Hallelujah. Uh, Colossians 2. Uh, let go to, let's turn to Colossians chapter 2 of Colossians, I believe. And we'll read verse 6. 
as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. That word walk means to uh, conduct oneself in a particular manner. Conduct yourself as he conducted himself. Hallelujah. That word walk means to behave in a particular manner. Behave now as a conqueror. Don't feel inferior to anything or any being on this planet. Hallelujah. Because you are a conqueror. Hallelujah. So I will make that statement again. Since we have received Christ Jesus, we should conduct ourselves in the same manner that he conducted himself when he was on earth in his physical body. Jesus believed the faith word of the Father. And Jesus spoke that faith word to sickness, disease, devils, weather conditions, dead people, shortages, and situations. Jesus taught us that the things that we desire are caused to appear by the expression of the authority of our spoken faith words. Therefore, we speak the faith words of the things that we want to appear, and they appear. Matthew chapter 9, verse 29 said, according to your faith be it unto you. That word, uh, according to, means on the authority of your faith. You see, man has been given authority on this planet because he got a human body. But, but, but then we're people of God. We are under God's authority. God, Christ is our head, and the head of Christ is God. And we are under the authority of Christ. And we have his authority and power over all things on this planet. So on the authority of our faith, be it unto us. If you speak the word only, you shall see the thing that the word said. If you speak the word only, you shall see things that the word said. Hallelujah. If you speak the word only, you shall see things that the word said. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. The centurion said to Jesus, But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. See, we speak the word only, then we'll see only what the Word has said, because things will be changed by the Word of God. Hallelujah. And here's what happened. Uh, uh, the centurion said, told you, speak the Word only. Express your authority, you know, in Word. And the situation is taken care of, because you have authority here on earth. The centurion was a man under authority, and he possessed authority. He understood authority. He knew that he... He had to obey the orders that was given him, and he knew that the orders he gave the soldiers under him had to uh, be obeyed by him. So he knew Jesus was under the authority of his father, and he knew that Jesus had authority over devils, demons, sickness, disease, the weather, and everything on this planet, because he's the son of man. Hallelujah. And so he said, speak your authority only. People are speaking their authority. Hallelujah. And here's what happened. In verse 13 of Matthew chapter 8, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Jesus and his body has authority over sickness and disease. Sickness shall obey our commands. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8, verse 23 through, through 2. Uh, 25, Luke chapter 8, verse 23, 2, 25 says, But as, as they sailed, he fell asleep. Jesus fell asleep as they sailed. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind. When you rebuke something, you speak correction to it. You give an order to it. You, you ex express your authority in word over that thing and to that thing when you rebuke a thing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased. And there was a calm. And he said unto them, where's your faith? Where's your spoken word? 
Why is authority of your, your words? Why didn't you speak to the wind and, and tell it to stop? Why come you didn't speak to the sea and tell it to stop? That's what Jesus was saying to his followers. And they being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, what manner of man is this? Jesus is the same manner of man that we are now, people of God. We are his body. We are the same manner of man that Jesus is because he's, hallelujah, he's our head of our body. Hallelujah. We're his body on earth. And they being afraid, one is saying one to another, what manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and water and they obey him. Friend, when you're in charge over things and beings, you command those things. You give orders to those things. When I was in the military, when you had a certain rank, you would command other uh, Marines, and they would obey you. Hallelujah. Because if you had command, when you have command, you will exercise command. God has given his body, Christians, command over the earth and over the atmosphere of the earth. We are commanded today. For he commanded even the winds. You tell the winds what to do. We tell the winds and the, and the, and the, and the rains and the, and the sleet and, and we tell the storms and the tornadoes and hurricanes what to do. We, com we have command over them and they obey us. We command sickness. We tell it where to go, what to do. Get away from the person. We tell the person about it, be healed. That, that's a command to the sickness, be gone. And it, it obeys us. We are commanders on this planet. We are commanding. For he commanded even the winds and water, and they obey him. Luke chapter 4, verse 35 and 36 says, And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. Jesus spoke correction to this evil spirit. That's what the word rebuke means. And he told him what to do. Jesus said, Hold thy peace. Oh, shut up. And come out of him. Jesus told him to come out of the person. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. We command unclean spirits, and they come out. We command sickness to, to leave out of the body, and the sickness comes out. Hallelujah. We, we command things by the authority and power that we have in Christ Jesus, and those things obey us. Luke chapter 4, verse 38 and 39 says this, And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. She was di sick, diseased by fever. And they besought Jesus, besought him, for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. He told the fever what to do. Get away from her. Leave. That's what he told her, the fever to do. And he uh, stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, and, and the Apostle Paul is speaking, and the life which I now live in the flesh, he said, the life which I now live in the physical body, because he had been born again. He said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. We live by the faith of the Son of God, and the faith of the Son of God is the faith of God Almighty. The Father and Son are one. Jesus is God. We got the faith of God Almighty. God dealt to every man the measure of faith. We have in life precious faith. Hallelujah says in Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, we have the same spirit of faith, the same spirit of faith that Jesus had in his body while he was here on the earth in his physical body. We got it on. Because we got Jesus in us. We're his body. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. Our faith, spirit of faith, is always precisely as it is written. See, this is the foundation for my faith. This is the base basis for my faith. This is my faith. The word that God has said. So my spirit of faith is always precisely as God has said. I believe. See, I believe what God said that I'm more than a copy. And therefore, that word therefore means for that reason since I believe, have I spoken. I, I, I speak that I'm more than a copy. God said I'm more than a copy. I believe it and I say it. That's the operation of my faith. And that's the operation of faith. When you believe 
according to Acts ring, and you say what you believe. God said that I'm the head and not the tail. See, well, I believe that, and I'm saying I'm the head. I'm the head. Barry's the head. I'm not the tail. God said I'm the lender, not the borrower. I believe that. So I go around saying I'm the lender, not the borrower. When you say that, then you'll see it. Hallelujah. It says, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, the whole body believe, according to as it is written. And therefore speak for the reason, for that reason that they believe the word, they speak it, so it will appear in their life. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. This is all the word of God. In operating our faith, we speak our believed word of God. We speak what we believe, and we believe only the written word of God. First John chapter 5, verse 4 says, for whatsoever is born of God, we are born of God. Overcome the world. We are overcomers. Whatever was in the world, we've already overcame. We are overcomers. Because we're born of God. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Our belief of what God said, and our speaking of that belief is the victory that has overcome every challenge. And that overcomes every challenge that we face. Hallelujah. For what's the born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. You are fighting the good fight of faith as you are maintaining your word belief and your speaking of that faith belief. See, you're fighting the good fight of faith as you are maintaining your word belief. See, I always believe that I'm the head and not the tail. So I'm fighting a good fight of faith, but I'll do more than just believe it. I say it. See, you see, because you you need to say what you believe, and then what you what you believe and what you said, it appears in your life. That's the operation of faith. You are fighting the good fight of faith as you are maintaining your word belief, and you are speaking of that word belief. You're fighting the good fight of faith as you are maintaining your word belief, and you're speaking of that faith belief. You have fought the good fight of faith when you have maintained your word of faith belief, your speaking of said word belief, until the appearance of the thing that you have spoken. See, you keep saying it until it has appeared. Hallelujah. And, and that means you kept the faith. What you said has appeared. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, you are fighting the good fight of faith as you are maintaining your word belief. You believe this. And you're speaking of that faith belief. I speak what I believe, uh, which is what God said. His word. I believe God's word and I say what God's word said about me. No matter how things look, no matter what other people say, I'm saying what God said about me and I'm believing what he said. And, and what he said about me appears in my life on every occasion. You are fighting the good fight of faith as you are maintaining your word belief. And you're speaking of that faith belief. You have fought the good fight of faith when you have maintained your word of faith belief. You're speaking of said word belief until the appearance of the thing that you have spoken. As long as you are keeping in your mouth the words that God is saying concerning you in Christ or other matters, then you are fighting the good fight of faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7 says, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. You see, when they said I had diabetes, I kept saying that I had been healed with his stripes and that I'm healed with his stripes. I maintained that in my mind. I've kept that in my heart. See, that I'm healed. I don't have diabetes. I'm healed with his stripes. I kept saying that. And what happened as a result of that, the end of my faith was Jesus is the author and finisher of our uh, faith, the completion of my faith. Brought about uh, healthy blood, healthy blood sugar. And they said, we can't find diabetes in your body. They kept looking and said, you know, it's remarkable. That's what one doctor said. I said, no, it's not a remark. Praise God. You know, you're talking about, you know, it's remarkable. He said, your hemoglobin ALC is just, it's always, it's just perfect. It's just perfect. I said, it's God. See, I maintain my, my word belief. I, I believe according to as it is written. 1 Peter 2.24, by whose stripes bear blood the word healed. Uh, Isaiah 53.5, and with his stripes bear blood. 
in the city. Well, we are healed. That's what it's saying. God heals us all, you know. You know, with God, there is no respect to person. Hallelujah. And so I maintain that word belief, and I maintain my speaking of that word belief. And the result, I'm healed. Like God was 